All right. So good afternoon, everyone. As the attendees roll into Zoom, uh, good afternoon. My name is Rob Romanofsky. I'm the Director of Sales Operations, and I'm your host for today's webinar focusing on Creo flow analysis. And um, leading the charge today, leading the uh, overview and the demo is going to be Zach Carson. Uh, Zach is with the Virtual Center of Excellence of PTC based uh, outside of Pittsburgh, uh, for all you Steelers fans out there. Uh, so <laughs> this will be a good webinar. This is, this is a fantastic tool, by the way. So we have a ton of experience regarding flow analysis. Um, at one point, we were a, as a, as a reseller for PTC Solutions, 3HTI, we've been, we're a platinum level reseller. We've been a reseller with PTC since 2002. Um, a majority, when I say majority, probably 50% of the people that are on staff here at 3HTI have worked at PTC um, in a sales capacity. So they really have this knowledge of the products and the solutions. And the support people that we have here at 3HTI have worked for customers that decided to come work for us. So we must be doing something right when our customers want to be a part of what we're doing. So um, computational fluid dynamics and finite element analysis is an area where we absolutely excel at at 3HTI. We have an expert on staff that has worked with um, entities like NASA. I mean, when you're training rocket scientists how to do their job, better for um, fluid flow and for FEA, uh, you must be doing something right. So we're very skilled and competent in this area. So the reason I say that up front and I'll say it again at the end of the webinar is that if you're working on a project, we can assist you with the project. Sometimes buying the software may not make sense because you might just need it for a project or you might use it infrequently. And that's where we can come in and run the project for you. Um, or it might be a situation where you need this, you need the solution, but you're not familiar with it or have anybody on staff that's familiar with it. And that's where we can help get, assist you to get up and running with the software quickly so that, you know, so that your people know how to use it, adopt the usage of the software so you can maximize the return on the investment rather quickly. We um, previously were also uh, a reseller for Mentor Graphics Solutions for their flow product. And what gets me excited is um, the guy that we have on staff, Bill Stickney, was super impressed by this. And he said, this, this, this in a lot of areas is, is better than what Mentor provides. And in this suite, there's different levels of pricing, whereas the Mentor solution is very expensive um, and there's no other options. And the Creo Flow Suite has several options based on what you need to have done. So it's a great product. It's a great solution. And Zach's going to take about maybe 20, 25 minutes to review uh, a slide deck, do a demo, and then we'll have Q&A at the end. So without further ado, Zach, why don't you uh, jump into it? And thanks, everybody, for being on. Yeah, thanks, everyone, for coming. And thanks, Rob, for the intro. Uh, my name is Zach Carson. Just introduce myself real briefly. I'm an application engineer for PTC's Virtual Center of Excellence. I specialize in PLM, uh, which is wind chill, and then Creo Parametric. So today we're gonna be going through Creo flow analysis. Uh, if you're not familiar with it at all, it's an extension in Creo Parametric. It's a CFD solution, and it allows users to simulate fluid flow directly in Creo. You do it early in the design process, so you can uh, much earlier in the design process, understand how your product's functioning and the performance of it before you get to the end and, you know, you find something's wrong and then it ends up being detrimental. This is going to help you avoid those type of situations. So we'll start quickly. Here's an agenda for today. Uh, so in the PowerPoint, we'll go over some challenges first, explain the solution, some capabilities. We'll dive into the demo and then we'll just finish off discussing some value. Okay, so the challenges that we see CAD users commonly facing when it comes to flow analysis starts with an inability to gain confidence early in the design process and mitigate risk. And that's because when you're not doing analysis early on, you always end up with more errors. You end up with more rework in the late stages of design, and then that inevitably results in more scrap as a result. 
And when you're getting those results so late in the game that they're not really influencing the engineering decisions. And then in the end, if you find problems, you're going to end up with delayed projects. You're going to have to redesign things. And that really, really extends the duration of that design process. Oh, went a little bit ahead there. And that means you end up with, you end up being able to spend way less time, much less resources trying to innovate. When this money is basically used making up for lost time and rework, then you can't possibly allocate as much of that towards optimization for your designs and then creating new designs. So CREO, PATC solution to these challenges is CREO flow analysis extension. So for this, we partnered with Samerix. They're a leader in CFD to give you a solution inside of CREO to do everything around flow analysis. Generate the mesh, input all of your specifications, create templates, enter all your physics, examine the actual flow, everything you need to do right inside of the CAD tool. And it's fully associated to the design. So if any changes or updates occur, even after you've started the analysis, you can immediately propagate those over to the analysis. All right. So when it comes to working with CFD tools, they're notoriously hard to use. They require a really high level of expertise typically. And they're usually really hard to set up just because there's just so much, so much physics that goes into them. Creo flow analysis is not that. It's much easier to use than your typical CFD tool. You don't have to be a specialist to set it up or to use it. it still has all the power behind it. You still have granular control, but we've just simplified it for Creo users. And there's even now a wizard that's going to help guide you through the setup process, teach you along the way. Obviously, that's hugely beneficial if you're not a CFD. Uh, specialist or expert, or maybe you just don't have that much experience, even if you're just new working in Creo, uh, that wizard's going to go a long way in helping you and then teaching you the ins and outs of flow in Creo. All right. You're able to go back and forth from between CFD and the CAD because they're both in the same tool. And that means you're not going to have any exporting or importing, which is huge. Sometimes CFD tools take weird file types. You're not going to have any problems with that. You're not going to have any issues with data translation. No extra cleanup uh, prior to meshing or running the analysis. Even when you're making changes to your designs, there's full associativity between the CAD and the CFD. So those changes will automatically propagate over when the designs are modified. You don't have to redo everything dealing with the setup either. So that's going to save you uh, a ton of time, a ton of rework. You know, a lot of your setup is going to stay the same. S some things that you'll have to change inevitably, but you can reuse almost everything that was previously set up and, and save yourself a lot of the headache in that regard. Okay. You're also not going to find a tool that's easier to create the flow models in than Creo. It has an automatic measure, so it generates the mesh for you. And it's actually 100% successful. And that's thanks to Samerix using their meshing. The way that it works is it uses all regular elements. And basically, it divides the service into squares. And if there's pieces of geometry that aren't completely in those squares, say like a curve, for example, it's going to put more squares and more squares and just keep subdividing those squares until it perfectly wraps your model. And according to Samerix, they use half the amount of elements as competitors and other solvers run in twice the amount of time. So Samerix is actually running four in four times the speed of competitors, and they're not compromising results accuracy at all. Another thing that you can do here is create templates, and that's really going to speed analysis setup as well. So say you get into your model, you're using this boundary condition, these specifications, this physics, turbulence, streamlines, whatever it is, you can save those settings, Use them as a template in future setups, and then just tweak things here and there uh, with whatever you want, depending on that use case. There's also a wizard, like I mentioned before, that's going to walk you through the setup, help you avoid mistakes. You know, kind of as you're you're seeing this for the first time, whether it's you're totally new to Flow or just totally new to it in Creo, it's going to teach you as you go through and then uh, streamline that process. So even as you're getting started, you're not going to be making mistakes. It's going to make sure you're not missing anything. All right. There's rapid simulation turnaround. You're not waiting for the mesher and the solver to converge. The meshing in the math is phenomenal. And like I said before, it takes half the iterations of competitors. So you're going to get re your results much, much faster. 
And the results, again, are extremely accurate. And that's really thanks to the Samaric solvers. Once you get those results, you know, post-processing is really extremely simple. There's tons of options that you have for that. You can look at different variables, set up plots, look at different services, look at variables within those certain services, all kinds of things that you can do around that. And we'll actually get to look at those some, uh, some of those today in the demo. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and jump into the demonstration. Did we uh, get any questions in the meantime? Not at this point, no questions yet. All right, sounds good. We'll go ahead and uh, jump right into the demo then. All right, can you see Creo now? Yes, yes I do. Sounds good. All right, so today we're gonna be working with this Polaris snowmobile assembly we have. Specifically for this, we'll focus on the heat exchanger. So first thing I'll do is just go ahead and isolate that. And this is a pretty basic design. Really all there is to this is just an inlet and outlet. It's not anything complicated. Uh, we can look at that. We can even take a look at the inside, get a better idea of what we're dealing with. In this case, it just has some channels for the fluid to flow through, so nothing too complicated. But the first thing that we're gonna go through with this is just setting up our analysis. Okay, so starting at the top, we'll go to the Applications tab, click on Flow Analysis. And as soon as we do that, you can see right away, we only have two options to choose from. Start a new project or open a project. And this is one of the ways that Creo simplifies a lot of what you're doing. This is across the board, not just in flow analysis. If something doesn't make sense for you or it's not needed, Creo's not even gonna give you the option to do it. For example, here, we can only either start a new project or open a previous one. Now, another thing is we'll be talking a little bit later about templates, but a lot of the settings that we're about to go through whether it's setting up boundary conditions, parameters, physics, all these things can be saved as a template. So you basically just start a new project and then use that template instead of going through all of the setup that we're gonna go through. That's gonna save you just tons and tons of time, especially if a lot of what you're running analyses on are very similar designs or assemblies. Now, one thing that you do have to do every time is create a fluid domain. And that's where we're gonna to start today. But right before that, if you actually look at the ribbon at the top, it's laid out so that throughout the course of this, we're basically just gonna be working from left to right. That's another way Creo simplifies this process for you. Again, that's something else that's become sort of, you know, just the standard for Creo, not just flow analysis. When you're looking at these toolbars, when you're looking at the different, um, you know, applications and tools, in Creo, you're gonna be working left to right just to simplify the process, keep you on track, help you understand what the next step is. So here, I mean, we're gonna create the fluid domain. Right after that, we'll jump into materials, specify physics, so on and so forth. Okay. So here, we're going to select to create the fluid domain. And what's gonna happen now, <clears throat> is Creo scans the model for all of the possible holes that it can find. Now, in, in any case, not every hole that it's going to detect is going to be an inlet or an outlet. So all we need to do is specify which ones are, and then Creo will find all of the volume that connects these two faces. Okay, so here, top is inlet, the bottom is the outlet. We selected those, and now we'll just add them to our simulation. Another thing that you can do which is kind of hard to see in this case, just because of the model and the color, is you can turn the CAD body off and just look at the internal volume. So here you're just looking at the inside of the heat exchanger, which is our fluid domain, uh, that everything's going to be flowing within. And then we also need to specify our solid component. So in this case, it's just the heat exchanger. We'll just select that right from the model tree. All right. So that's all done. Next step, specify our different materials. Okay, so we'll just click on that from the ribbon at the top. First is to determine what we're actually dealing with. Are we dealing with air, some type of gas? Is it a liquid? These are all just from the default uh, materials library. Today, we're just gonna be working with water. And then the solid domain is simply our heat exchanger. That has its own properties. Those are all very precise too. You know, they're defined whenever you are creating that, that CAD design. Um, but they're all very precise so that we can actually do these types of analyses. 
All right, so next is the physics module. So we can go in here, set these the physics up to get the most accurate results. For this, we're gonna be dealing with turbulence. We'll definitely have heat. We'll bring in some streamlines as well, uh, just so that we can see the fluid velocity through the domain. There's other options here as well. This is really where the different packages start to come into play. So that's what's gonna decide what you can pick from here. Um, if you're dealing with different types of analysis, you know, you might need you know, one package or another. We can look at that later on uh, just to determine what your usage is or, you know, you look at the packaging, determine which area you have to go in that direction. So with all of the physics chosen, what we're gonna do is go to the analysis tree and start to specify our different properties. So the physics is always listed here first, just so you know what you have selected. Domains are underneath of that. And the domains are what we're gonna be dealing with now. So whenever we click on one of these domains, all of the properties are going to appear underneath. These are all defaults. Uh, you can specify what those defaults are. That kind of gets back into those templates again. But for today, we're gonna to leave most of this as is. Um, we're just going to change this min-max temperature from no to yes. That's gonna give us a plot of the temperature values whenever we're running the analysis. And you don't have to add all these plots in now. You can put those plots in whenever you want. If you don't think about it now, maybe you forget, you can do it later on in the process. Underneath of the domains in the analysis tree, we have the boundary conditions. So this basically just tells the system uh, how the fluid is entering the body, how it's exiting the body, so that it, it knows how it's going in, how it's coming out, and can figure out how it's going to react in between. So the first one that we have here is the inlet. We'll just specify the volume, we'll specify the temperature, and then it'll calculate pressure and things like that. For the outlet, this is an easy one. Uh, we'll just specify pressure. And then the heat for the heat exchanger. So all of these solid walls need to have a boundary condition. We're gonna say that there's convection going on. We'll enter in a heat exchange coefficient, ambient temperature, and then we're good to go. All right, so once all that's done, you've laid out all your physics, your boundary condition and your properties. The next step is to generate the mesh. All we did was at the top, we selected the icon beside physics, it says generate mesh. And remember, the great thing about Creo is it has an auto mesher, so you really don't even have to worry about this. Once this finishes up, we can go to the model and then we can actually turn on the grid to display the mesh, um, just so that you can see what it looks like. So we'll go ahead and do that. And you can see here when you look at this that the automatic mesher refined the results on its own or refined the mesh in certain areas where it needed to be refined in order to get the most accurate results. On the inlet and on the outlet, that mesh is much, much finer than say on the side of the heat exchanger because it needs to be. The side, it doesn't have to be. The, the, the mesher knows that, it determines that. Creo says, okay, for us to get the best results in the fastest amount of time, we don't need to have as refined a mesh on the, on the face of this thing. So it's not gonna spend the time doing that. All right, so we'll go ahead and turn that off. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we can bring in our XY plot and then we're actually ready to run the analysis. So whenever we run that with that XY plot there, we're going to get a real time look at the different variables before this thing converges. And this is amazing because let's say your simulation is gonna run for an hour you turn this on, you're watching the streamline. Right away, you see something weird going on. Maybe the water's flowing in the wrong direction or something like that. You realize you flipped the inlet and outlet. You know that immediately. You're not waiting an hour, two hours, or however long that analysis takes. You know it instantly. You can stop it. You can fix what you messed up and then rerun the analysis on the spot. It's going to save you a lot, a lot of time. Once it's done, and once it converges, it's done running the analysis. Post-processing is really easy to do in Creo. There's tons of different things that you can look at. So we can look at the streamlines here. We can start to look at different variables if we want to. Maybe instead of temperature, I wanna look at pressure. We can look at that. Lots of different options. They're gonna paint the model for you. Uh, this seems really simple to do here, but it's actually not always this easy in different tools. I mean, there's some systems that post-processing takes 
as, as much time as setting up the analysis, actually. It seems elementary in Creo, but that's not always how it is. We can also bring in different surfaces, look at different derived surfaces or different planes. Maybe we want to shift the plane with the scroll bar or specify the, the position for the plane. We can even bring in ISO surfaces. So let's say we want to focus on a surface and then look at temperature on that surface. What we can actually do is say, I want to see everywhere on this model that that fluid is 314 degrees. It's actually going to show that and display that model. It's going to show us that contour plot. We can move that scroll bar. I can even specify a value. So I want to see everywhere on this thing that it's 345 degrees. It's going to show us that on the model. All right. So before we go any further, I see we have some questions in the Q and A. Um, Rob, do you want yes, me to go do. through those now, or do you want to do you want to wait till the end, or what do you want to do? No, let's let, let's get to them right now. So, okay. one of the questions, and and maybe you can understand this better than I can if you see it, <laughs> but he he's asking if Creo Flow can can run thermal with the ability. The second part makes sense with the ability to define bolted interfaces like a dry joint, thermal interface, material, etc. Yes, it can. I'm not sure which um, I would have to look at the packaging yeah, to see if there's any to more, see if that's like a base capability or if you have to um, get a different package for that. But I yeah, it definitely we have to can. look at which package does that. But yeah, the, the answer is the answer is yes. We just have to figure <laughs> out which package. And and that's the thing about the packages. What's great is that if you don't need a lot, you're not paying you know a lot of money for a package with a lot of you know, capabilities that you're not going to use. Right. And the base package does a ton of stuff too, which is really nice. It's, it's pretty impressive. It is. Um, so the other, other question is how, how do you change units to the English system? So I think they're trying to go from a, go to the metric system. Yeah, that's just uh, that's an option. Whenever you are either going through the variables or defining the physics, you could just, there's a drop down to change units there. Cool. Anytime you define anything, you'll have the option for units. All right. Let's, uh, let's crack on then. Yep, sounds good. All right, so the next, the next uh, portion of this, I mentioned before in the PowerPoint how a huge you know, aspect of flow analysis is that it's done in Creo, right? And it's related to, uh, directly associated to the CAD model. So, so this is an embedded system. It, it embeds itself in Creo, so you do not have to export the file and then import it into Creo Flow and then back again. Right. So let's say we're going to look here at what happens when we have maybe some different configurations or maybe some changes happen. In this case, let's say we have a little bit different of a configuration for the inside of this. Because there's full associativity between the CAD model and uh, the analysis, in this case, the inside of the heat exchanger changed, but all we need to do is go to that model tree. We suppress or basically just hide the internal geometry we had before and then unsuppress this other geometry. And now looking at the cutout inside of this thing, I mean, you can see the whole inside here has changed. There's all these different pegs and things in there on the inside rather than basically, you know, just those two channels, just that one bend, taking it from the inlet to the outlet. It's literally that simple. Now, on the other hand, say that you had something that's not just a configuration, maybe your part went through or your assembly went through a pretty drastic change, maybe you're even, you know, six months down the line from when you ran the first analysis. What we can do is when you come into Creo, you can open flow analysis. Again, we can either start a new project or open a project. In this case, we are going to open the project and whenever we open that up, it has everything laid out from before. It's all still set up because it didn't, it doesn't know yet that a change actually happened to this thing. So everything is still the same as before. All of our properties, everything that we set up. As soon as we go to click update from this ribbon, Creo will recognize that a change has been made. And it tells us here that all current fluid domains will be deleted but it's only deleting our fluid domain. When there's an update, Creo has no idea if you've added more holes. It doesn't know if you've chopped that fluid domain in half. So it basically says, I know your setting, 
but let's figure out where your domains are now. Where's your inlet? Where's your outlet? And then we follow the same exact process that we did before when we were setting this thing up. Okay, so here, select the inlet there on the top, the outlet on the bottom. And then we can just continue just like we did before. So we can bring in the plot if we want to. And then as soon as we do that, we're ready to run the analysis. We didn't have to go and define every one of those boundary conditions again. We didn't have to go and define all the domains like before. We can bring in the streamline and look at the plot. And you can see already you know, how much is, this thing has changed. Before, there was basically just the two bends in this. Now it's more of that zigzag pattern. But we get a real-time look at this. And you saw, I mean, that could have been a huge change. But it's so much faster and so much easier to apply that to the analysis. You're not redoing everything, going through all the, the, the tedious setup. Now, a lot of that you could you know, cut out based on templates, but it really just simplifies and streamlines this process. Okay, so this is, is going to take a minute to run. We'll give it a second here to finish up. And then once this is done, I mean, we have all the same options as before when it comes to post-processing, dealing with that contour plot. Um, again, we can look at the results live. You can see how this thing's reacting, change the variables if you want to. Whatever you wanna do to basically get the best understanding of how this thing's actually functioning, is it working the way that you want to, et cetera. So maybe here we wanna look at a variable, say on the outside of the heat exchanger, we can use the contour plot on the outside, see where, see the temperature distribution there. We can look at it on the inside and the outside, just so many different options. And like I said, this seems so elementary in Creo and it is very easy to do in here, but for a lot of tools, it's, it's really not that simple. And then we can do the same thing we did before. Show me everywhere on this thing where it's 343 degrees, it's gonna paint that on the model for us. So that's Creo's flow analysis. You can do it all in the design environment without necessarily being a CFD expert or being a CFD specialist or even having tons of experience. Um, and you can do it all in the design environment where it's connected to the CAD design. You can update changes, uh, propagate those over very quickly, very easily, and it's gonna streamline the analysis within the design tool. Okay, so I have a few more points I wanna share uh, just based on the value that this can provide to you. I see that we have a few more questions here. In the yeah, one of the questions is what what hardware? That, that, this is a good question. Like what hardware are you uh, running this? Would you run Creo Flow on? In what regard? Are you talking, I guess, uh, the graphics card? So, yeah, I, I guess what I'll do is maybe if, if – I know Bill Stickney most likely knows, um, but I, the question is basically because it's a little more like – and that's a good point. It's more than just hardware. It's also um, what types of gra what type of graphics card that you would use. Right. And I, I know we it. have this information. It's sometimes it's not right like on the top of our you know tip of our tongue, but we do have this information. I just want to see if, if I do. You, have you know it what? Handy. Give me give me literally one second here. I can see. I'll if give I you have a second. Is if if Bill wants to speak while you're looking for that, Bill stick. Yeah, I I can weigh in on that. Um, okay. This system um, does not do much of anything with GPU acceleration. So the graphics card is not critical. We generally recommend the uh, NVIDIA Quadro cards with Creo. So any card you have, it'll run Creo is probably fine. The problem you run into with any kind of analysis, and this is no exception, is that if the problems get large, they are very compute intensive and run for um, well, anywhere from you know minutes to potentially hours, but usually not that long. Uh, the problem's actually, and curiously, a thermal problem. If you have a laptop with an inadequate fan, you might cook it. So you want to make sure you have good cooling on whatever you're running. That's good advice. Yeah, I run I run this stuff on a um, a desktop. It's got water cooling. It runs beautifully. Probably don't need that much, but. Um, don't try to run it on a cheap laptop. Mm -hmm. the, the amount of uh, RAM is important too. It depends, that will limit how large a problem you can do. Yeah, I actually just pulled that up now. I'm looking at it. Um, a minimum of four gigabytes of video RAM. 
And then that might be all you need for, for most users. Is, is there a recommendation on uh, CPU RAM? It does say recommended for the best results, eight gigabytes. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably need more. Okay. That, that's where Bill comes in because you have what, what, you know, PTC will recommend, hey, we think this is good for the product or whatever, but Bill's got so much experience working with customers on this. It, he, he gets that firsthand knowledge. Yeah, it, it depends on the, the size of the model and the size is determined typically by the number of elements. If you have a complex model and you get up into you know the three or four million element range, um, you'll you'll need more memory than that. I would say you'd be comfortable running on uh, 64 gig, and you could probably run on 32 if your jobs aren't too large. And and this this is where you know having Bill is you know on our staff is, is significant because we can help people instead of guessing, we know. So we can have a conversation with you about what 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 you're making what you're designing what those models are and figure out okay you can use this or you can use this because what you don't want to do and even with the, we had a question about pricing also and part of the issue with pricing is there's a uh you know we could we could send a uh a pdf that says oh here's the three um the three products in the creo flow suite and here's the pricing but if you pick the wrong one you're in trouble because if you if you don't get enough if if you pick the wrong one you might overpay and then you have more capabilities than you need and if you mm -hmm. underpay then you don't have what you need but you thought you did because of what the brochure said and that's where we come in is because we don't we don't want you to overpay we don't want you to underpay we want you to get what's good for you, what's right for what you're modeling and at the same time if you're um, if you think in the future you're going to have you're going to have to do uh, run CFD, um, you know if it's going to change, if if it's going to increase, if you're going to have different projects, you know that's where we become a trusted advisor to our customers to assist them in in not just using and adopting the software, but also in growth and increasing the capabilities of, of what you can do. Um, Rob, there's another question on uh, use of multi cores. Uh huh. Uh, the uh, uh, the base version runs on up to eight cores, so it, it does do uh, a significant amount of parallel processing. Uh, I believe it is multi multi threaded, mm -hmm. and um, you, you can run it on more cores than that, but um, that's usually adequate. So again, you don't want a real cheap machine, but if you got a good solid machine with eight cores, you're good. Good deal. So, All right, any more questions? Um, there was one more on whether it does a time dependent analysis. That would be a um, a transient analysis would be the, the term they would probably use. Uh, yes, it does do transient analyses. Um, they, they will run longer, which is true of everybody's software. Mm -hmm. You very definitely can do transient problems. So I wanted to show my screen. Oh, sure. Which uh, Let me uh, stop the share here. All right, here we go. All right, good job. Uh, do, 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 do. All right, whoops, I gotta do this. There we go. Um, so here's, so basically I wanna thank everybody for coming on. And if you have any other questions while we're, you know, before we um, dismiss, you can feel free to type them in and we'll answer them, uh, answer them right away. Uh, okay, a couple more came in. All right, this is good. Um, does this system run a time-dependent analysis as well as steady state as demonstrated? Yeah, I just answered that one, Rob. Um, it does, um, um, it, I, I call the transient analysis. That's essentially the same thing. Gotcha. Do, do we and, get, and it will do it. 
Yeah, I, I was trying to pull up this slide, so I was like, kind of tuned out for a second. Um, this other question regarding using simple problems like a rot in a rotating flow. Um, yeah, th I think we're gonna we're gonna. Um, yeah, I think what we we're gonna do, Francisco, is we're gonna we're gonna have a conversation, hopefully this afternoon, and just kind of detail a little more about what you need to do and figure out how simple or how complex it is. Does it sound like it's too too complex, which is good? So we can definitely get you get you pointed in the right direction. Yeah, um, one, one thing I'll say with respect to uh, rotation, it will do in fact uh, problems with, um, for example, axial turbines. So you, you can model rotating machinery. Not sure if that's what the question was. However, we can talk about that in more detail, certainly. Yeah, this, this stuff's not simple, which is why I, I, a lot of people shy away from it. But I mean, the Creo Flow packages are excellent packages and they can assist you. And it's like once you don't even have to get over a major learning curve, we assist you in how to use the software because the software does it all for you. So you don't need to be um, an analyst um, with a major degree um, to do a downstream analysis. Because once it gets downstream and it needs to be changed, then it's got to go back to the start. And that costs all kind of money because you're going to delay, um, delay your, um, your deadlines and everything else that goes into all the rework that needs to be done. So the point is to do this up front so that if you do have an analyst on staff, that everything is basically just verified at that point, or if you don't, that Creo flow, using it all the way through the process, you know, in the design, that you don't need one. And it basically depends on the complexity of the product that you're making. So if you think of something afterwards and you want to contact us, you know, info at 3hti.com, you could call us at 866-324-3hti. My information's on the screen. Um, you can respond to the emails that we sent you uh, regarding this webinar. If you respond to them, they come directly to me. So we're glad to help you out and assist you in any way, uh, any way you need. We want to help people make better products faster so that they have less stress in their lives. And that's, that's a fact because if you're, you know, I'm, I'm hosting an augmented reality webinar in about 20 minutes and you know, a lot of it's going to focus on frontline workers and everything that I'm thinking about is if you can do your job more effectively and have less stress, it makes the, it makes the drives to and from work as well as the time at work a lot easier. So anyway, with that, Bill, thank you very much. And uh, Carson, thank you also for being on and uh, most importantly to, uh, to our guests who are on today. So we're going to be dismissed at this time. And if you have anything that, that you uh, need any information on, please contact us. We're glad to help you out. So thank you again. And have a great day. Take care, everybody. Thanks, everyone.